If you've ever spent some time browsing the range of watches that Seiko have on offer, you'll probably have seen quite a few. There is the entry-focused Seiko 5, the dressier Presage line, the sportier Prospects watches and more. One that doesn't get talked about all that often is Astron. They have a high-end line of quartz watches that often use a GPS module to sync to the correct time. Mainly due to their size, they are unwearable for many people. They are almost always big, busy, and a bit pricey. Notice I said almost. I've found one that's none of those things. In fact, it's downright sensible, and not just by Astron standards. Welcome to Addicted to Watches. Today, we're looking at a watch from Seiko's Astron line that bucks pretty much every trend of other Astron watches. It's got a wearable case, a simple dial and limited complications, and an understated look that could very easily be worn on an everyday basis, from the beach all the way to the boardroom. This is the Seiko Astron SBXY031. You'd be forgiven if you didn't believe that intro. I wouldn't have either, unless I wasn't physically holding the watch in front of me here. There's a reason for that though. You won't find this watch on most of Seiko's websites around the world. In fact, you'll only find it on one, their Japanese website. They've done it again, they've hoarded the best stuff for themselves in the JDM market. I'm not really sure why this watch isn't marketed around the world, but I think it would be a really big hit for the brand if they did. Well, there might be one reason it wouldn't but we'll get into that later. As we go over the watch, you'll probably notice many similarities to other watches we've looked at on the channel from Seiko's other JDM Brights watches. This watch, however, takes all of those features of those watches and turns them up a notch in terms of quality, design, and finishing. In addition to this blue version I have here, there is a white and black dial version too, as well as a couple of other variants with some Roman numerals on the dial. These watches are much more affordable than other Astron watches too, coming in with a retail price of 110,000 Japanese yen, but are readily available for 88,000. In other words, just 640 US dollars if you buy from somewhere like Sakura watches. Their prices do fluctuate, so if you look at these watches in the future on Sakura or other sites, the prices may be a little bit different. Either way, for well under $1,000, which is a price point you won't find many other Astron watches at, it makes a very good case for itself. There are lots of places we could start with this watch, but since old habits die hard, let's start with the dial. As you can see, I have the blue. I like blue watches, so it was bound to happen. I really like this dial. It's eye-catching without being overbearing, and the shade of blue is also toned down to match that. It's a bit more of a desaturated blue, with just a touch of green mixed in. The dial surface from a distance looks quite a bit like the Cocktail Time series of watches, but if you look more closely, you can actually see the real texture are these concentric wavy lines that encircle the pinion. Altogether, they create that radial sunburst effect, which is very striking. Sitting above the pinion is what has to be one of the most thinly applied logos I've ever come across. It took using my macro camera to see whether there was actually an applied logo or just molded into the dial texture. Below the pinion, and definitely printed, is simply the word Astron. Seiko could have done a lot more here, and on many other watches they do, but I'm really glad they showed some restraint and kept it to only two words on the dial. I feel like simplicity is the whole point of this watch as an Astron watch, and a few lines of text would have ruined that. As we move around the dial, we have applied hour markers that may look deceptively simple. In terms of shape, they're pretty straightforward fence posts, with a double at 12 to help with orientation. However, it's only when you get in close like we are here with the macro that you can see, in addition to the polished bevels, the top surface of each marker has these vertical striations running their length. They use this on some other watches I've looked at, and with the naked eye, it creates a kind of rainbow effect when the light hits them. As a result, even without the presence of any loom on the watch whatsoever, you can still get a read of the time when there is only a little bit of light. One of those markers has had its dreams cut short though to make way for a date at 3. It's surrounded by a thin, applied frame, and while not particularly obtrusive, 
I can't help but think how much better it would have looked if the date wheel was blue to match the dial rather than black. In this regard, either of the other two color variants would be better, having a perfectly matched date. That said, it's a very minor gripe. Surrounding the dial is an angled chapter ring that has minutes marked to help you read the time. In some spots, in place of those minutes are letters, which are used in conjunction with the movement to tell you things like battery level, signal reception, and time zone setting. The colour of this might be a shade or two darker than the dial, but I think that works well to frame the dial as a whole. Hands, you've got them, I've got them, watches have them. On this one, Seiko have used their neat little trick of polishing one side and frosting the other for ultimate legibility. The hands are dauphine in shape, with a bevel down the middle that provides two different surfaces for the different finishings. Proportions are good, with the hour hand just inside the markers and the minute hand just inside the chapter ring. Interestingly, the second hand is white rather than silver and ties in with all of the printing on the dial and chapter ring. It stands out a little, but I don't mind it. Covering all that is of course a sapphire crystal, and this one in particular has received Seiko's ultra clear coating. This coating does a great job cutting down on reflections, and is definitely a step above the anti-reflective coating that Seiko uses on their mid-range watches. In operation, there has never been a time for me that it's been really difficult at all to read the time due to light or reflections. Even direct sunlight isn't a problem. If I turn the watch, you can also see that it's domed, and we get some very pleasant distortion as we approach a more extreme angle. So. A big part of what makes this watch wearable when we compare it to other Astron watches is how simple and straightforward it is. No subdials, no meters, no world time markings, no second time zone either, just the time and date. However, that's not all there is to it. The size of a watch is probably even more important when considering how wearable a watch is. Thankfully, this one is a fantastic compact size and features an excellent set of measurements which are a case size of 39mm, a height of just 9.8, and a lug-to-lug -lug of just 45.5mm. That low height and short lug-to-lug -lug mean that it will sit well on a wide range of wrist sizes, and in particular, that low height results in a very low profile under the radar Astron watch. Never thought I'd use all those words together in a sentence. Case finishing is exactly what I would want it to be, Holding the crystal in place is a polished bezel that catches the light and plays with it nicely. It's quite slim so it doesn't take anything away from the dial. The top surface as well as the sides of the case and lugs are very finely brushed and those surfaces are broken up by a polished chamfer. It's thin enough to not sparkle too much, but thick enough to look intentional and highlight the gentle curve of the case. Also polished and quite easy to miss is a very slim section on the inside of the lugs. Looking at that flat case side here, we can see the very fine brushing, as well as just how thin the watch is thanks to the movement inside. The crown in a surprising move is not signed, and recessed at the 4 o'clock position is a little pusher that you can use to interact with the movement. That crown doesn't screw down, nor does the relatively simple case back, but the watch still manages to achieve a respectable 100 meters of water resistance, which should be more than enough for anything you throw at it short of diving. Back around to the front, and we can take a look at the bracelet. Seiko cops a lot of criticism for their bracelets, especially towards the budget and mid-range lines. This is an Astron watch though, and in my opinion, this bracelet reflects the more premium line. While not perfect, this bracelet addresses many of the complaints that people have when it comes to Seiko's bracelets. To start with, that end link is well integrated into the shape of the lugs and matches the curve of the case. As it leaves the case, where it measures 20mm in width, it tapers ever so slightly to 18 at the clasp. At first, the links might look like they're completely brushed, but like the case, they have some very subtle polished accents. There is a sliver of polish on each edge of the link to catch the light in a way where you're not sure if it's actually polished at all, but gives a defined edge to the shape of each link. In addition to these, there is a section of polish on the inner sections of each mid-link that is mostly hidden, but reveals itself when the bracelet wraps around the wrist. Finally, we arrive at the clasp, and while it doesn't have any micro-adjustment, the links themselves are very short, so, if not a perfect fit, you should still be able to get a very good fit. 
This is a mechanism of the clasp is milled and solid feeling. The way the clasp closes is also very neat, creating a very smooth shape under the wrist. When closed, it could almost look like it's a butterfly clasp. That clasp is also etched with the brand logo. So, earlier I said you could wear this as an everyday watch. We've talked about the design and the size of the watch, but there is another factor to consider when thinking about the watch you wear every day. That is comfort, and this watch has two features that help with that even more. One is obvious, one less so. By now, I'm sure you've noticed the slightly dull grey colour of the watch. That is of course due to the fact that the watch is made from titanium rather than stainless steel. It has also received a dye shield coating from Seiko to help reduce any scratches. The titanium construction reduces weight significantly and makes the watch very light and comfortable to wear. The other, less obvious feature of the watch relates to the bracelet. Yes, it's got short links, but those links are actually fully articulated. That means that each link can be bent at each connection, and you can essentially stack the bracelet up like this if you want to. Being so flexible, it conforms to the shape of your wrist when being worn, and really does fit like a glove. The final piece of the puzzle that we haven't looked at is the movement. Most Astron watches use solar GPS movements on the inside. This one has a solar movement, just without the GPS functionality. Instead, it uses radio waves, like some others from Seiko's Brights collection. However, as with any movement, there's levels to it. This one is a higher-end 7B72 movement, which can receive radio signals or have the time set manually. Those four letters on the chapter ring from 12 to 2 help you set the watch to a time zone, or you can pull out the crown and set it like a normal watch. Kinda. When you pull out the crown to the second position, the second hand spins around, and when you turn the crown, the second hand moves to 12. Then, you'll feel a click, which will advance the minute hand one minute forwards or backwards. It's a little jarring at first, if you have to do this, but you won't need to do it very often, because the watch is very accurate. Okay, I've been talking it up, so let's get it on wrist and see how it wears. In my opinion, this watch is a great size to be an everyday watch. At 39mm, it's right in the middle of a good sized watch, and, like I said, being so thin really helps too. Because it's so flat, the case doesn't need to curve too much, but it still does slightly to hug the wrist even more. I've gone over why the bracelet is so comfortable already, and, as I turn my wrist here, you can just about see those flashes of polish between the links. That crystal is also working hard to keep any reflections from getting in the way of reading the time or seeing that great texture on the dial. Having a 20mm lug width also means that we can swap out the bracelet if we want to for a different strap. I think that blue is just asking to be paired with a brown leather strap, and they look fantastic together. The more neutral blue of the dial matches well with the neutral brown of the strap, and it's very comfortable to wear. For something a little bit different, how about this grey leather strap? which I think complements the watch really well. It goes without saying at this point that I'm a fan of the watch. When we were looking at the bracelet, I touched on the lack of micro-adjustment, and earlier also about the lack of loom, which would really seal the deal for this as an everyday watch. However, I also mentioned that there might be one reason why Seiko isn't marketing this watch outside of Japan. I'm not saying they can't or shouldn't, but the movement somewhat limits where this watch is most useful, it's the Radio Wave Sync that's the source of this. Like every other Radio Wave watch I've had on the channel before, there are only certain countries where this will actually work. If you're not in one of those, you're relying on the regular accuracy of the movement, and you lose that time syncing functionality. If you're in Japan, the US, China, Germany, or the UK, you've got nothing to worry about, and even nearby countries to those as well. But, if you're living somewhere like Australia, far away from those signals, you're out of luck, unless you use one of those phone apps that replicate the radio signal. All in all, however, that isn't a deal breaker by any means for the watch for me personally. I was never banking on this functionality, and considering the movement inside is accurate enough as it is, I probably wouldn't even really notice a difference even if it did sync. The next time I make a trip back to Japan though, I can rely on it automatically changing the time by itself when it picks up the signal. So that's nice. Do I think this could be a viable option as an everyday watch? Absolutely. I might be repeating myself here again, 
but it's got an understated, well-considered design that prioritizes legibility and versatility, and when combined with the case design and material, forms a very complete package that you can just throw on your wrist and forget you're even wearing, until you need it to check the time. Having a dial like it does, that you can appreciate up close never hurts either. At the end of the day, it is yet another JDM watch that feels like a bit of a secret. Many other models, from their domestic releases, get a decent level of coverage on YouTube, social media, and elsewhere online. But, I feel like this one still is relatively unknown. However, a little less maybe after you've watched this video, because I think it's an awesome little watch that packs in a lot of value and quality for an accessible price. What do you think about this watch? Had you heard of this model already? Do you have a different Astron in your collection? Was I wrong and big and busy is the whole point of the Astron line? Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you next time.